what you have given me, even if you may find nothing to give him thanks for which I doubt. Just for this life that he has given you this morning. Just for taking care of you. He has led you from your house, even to this morning, into his presence. Just tell him, Father, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your providence. Thank you for the battles that you have fought for me. For many are the battles that the Lord continually fights for us that we cannot see. Many are the ways that the Lord keeps on opening but we cannot see. But them that you have seen, them that you have not seen, in gratitude, let us just lift our hands before him this morning and say to him, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, had it not been your hand, the enemy could have swallowed my life. Had it not been your hand, the pit that the enemy had dug for me, could I have could have fallen in it. Had it not been for you, Lord, where could my life have been? Had it not been for your mercy, Jehovah, my God, I would have been down to the pit of hell. Had it not been for your life, I would not have this salvation that I have this morning. Had it not been for you, Jehovah, my God, I would have been doomed to destruction. I would have been doomed to sin. But Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love. Even before we knew of you, you say that you loved us all, God. That you have called us your sons, my Father. Not because of anything that you have done, but because of your grace. And we say we love you, God. We worship your name this morning. Blessed be the holy name of God. Blessed be the King of Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jehovah, for this life. We thank you for the provision, of God. We thank you even for the means, my Father, which we take for granted. We thank you for the shelter, my God. We thank you for the gift of parents. We thank you for the gift of children. We thank you for the gift of siblings, oh God. We thank you for the gift of belonging to a nation. We thank you for the gift of allowing us to fellowship this morning. Father, we don't take you for granted, oh God. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your spirit, oh God. How we love you this morning. And we lift our hands just to worship you. Asante Asante kwa uku wako bwana Asante kwa fadhili zako bwana Asante Jehovah Chi Asante Jehovah Sham Jina lako limitiwa siku ya leo bwana Hakuna radie kama wewe Jehovah Hallelujah Na asante
Fadili zako yawe Asante kwa ukuu wako Tunaona wemba wako Tunaona fadili zako wako Tumeona ukuu wako Tumeona kutuinu wabu wako Tumeona ukikumbu wanjia Tumeona kutuna mesha wako Tunaskama rastante Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu Asante Yesu
This morning, we came to worship Him. We came to lead you into worshiping and loving God. This morning, wherever you're watching us from, whichever nation, you can just open up your mouth. Let us love the Lord this morning. The Bible says that the reason why He created us is that we may obey His command and that we may honor Him, that we may love Him, that we may adore Him. The Bible says, uh, in His presence, there are 24 elders, there are six, there are four creatures. Uh, they are angels and camping all around him and what they do, every moment they bow at his feet, they worship him and they glorify his name and there is a song they sing in heaven and they say, you are holy, you are holy, from whenever you are watching us, even if you are watching us from the hospital bed, just open up your mouth and tell God, you are holy in my life this particular day, that God that he has given you the gift of life, God has given you an opportunity to be alive, oh my God, just just open up your mouth and oh, count your blessings one after the other. Many other times we concentrate on the bad things that are working against us. Uh, but we forget that there is a God in heaven uh, who has given us life, who has given you the ability to be what you are this particular day. From whichever nation you are hearing our voice this particular day, just appreciate God and tell Him uh, what I need is you come. Over this morning, we are counting our blessings. I want you to look at your body. Many people they don't have every, every part of their body functioning, many cannot even wake up from wherever they are. Many people are even more supported by the, by the, 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 the machines in hospitals. But God has given you an opportunity to be alive, Father. We thank you this morning. How oh, we love you today. We appreciate you. I'm requesting the church many other times. We just look at the bad things, we confess them. We forget to remember the things that God has done to us. My God, when I look at my country, we are ministering to you from the nation of Kenya. When I look at my country this morning, my mouth can only just, uh, you know, ju just celebrate God and say, many are the nations that don't have peace. Uh, many are the nations where people do not have peace every day. But God has given us a peaceful country. My God, God has given us uh, a nation that has very good weather. My job, we have all the reason to thank God. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and tell God, Father, we thank you this morning. We give you the glory this morning, my country. We exalt you, Father, we love you. We honor you and name you deserve all the glory. You deserve our worship this morning. You deserve all the honor of God. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Lord. You, Jesus, we exalt you on him this morning. Father, we adore you. We call you only in our midst. Hallelujah. King of kings and the Lord of lords, you 
alone is worthy this morning. You alone is God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We honor you, Amen. We adore you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, even in these early times, we remember Jesus, you prayed for us. And the Bible says that wherever you are seated on the right hand of the Father in heaven, the Bible is giving us confidence this morning that you are still interceding for us. So we are not alone here on earth. We are not orphans, O oh Lord. We have confidence in your name. Lord, we desire more of you today. More of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. My God, from this uh, online broadcast, if somebody is watching us from whichever nation, and my Father, in whichever situation as a circumstance, they could be undergoing in their lives. My Father, we are releasing a word of healing. We are releasing a word of restoration. We are releasing a word of reconciliation. We are releasing a word, my God, that is able to restore somebody's marriage. We are releasing a word, my God, that is able to give somebody hope this morning. Them that are hard to break at my God and they are listening to us and watching us today we are declaring that God you are making their lives of a father in the mighty name of Jesus we are commanding cancer to bow we are commanding HIV to bow we are commanding arthritis to bow we are commanding heart diseases to bow we are commanding every condition I go to bow the feet of Jesus hallelujah we release healing, oh God. Come on, somebody, we are releasing healing. Emotional healing, spiritual healing. In the name of Jesus. Be comforted as you watch us this morning. Be comforted by the grace of God. Be comforted in your marriage. Be comforted in your children. Be comforted in your business. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I hear much comfort in the spirit of God this morning. Even as we minister to you from this altar, I'm hearing much comfort in the spirit of God today. So I'm releasing the word of comfort in the company of, in the company of my brethren. We are saying be comforted by the grace of God in the name of Jesus. Comfort in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are watching us. The Bible says, My God, the Bible says, Wherever Jesus went, He did it good. We are declaring the goodness of God upon your lives from whichever nation, whichever race. As long as you can watch, you can see us, you can hear us. May you be comforted by the grace of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you the glory, God, that we honor your name today. Thank you, Father, for what you have done. Thank you for what you are about to do. And thank you for what you have been in store for us, oh God. Even as we go to this and you want this particular day, we thank you. Because God, your word will comfort us even the more by your grace in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. I'm saying in Jesus' name we worship. We can put our hands together and appreciate the Hallelujah, we appreciate you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to hear the word of God. We have limited time to be online. So I want us to hear the word of God and sing us. We can have our seats. Even as you give me the heart of fellowship to minister to the nations of the world by the grace of God. For those who are listening to us and you're wondering how to connect to us online, kindly go to our Facebook page that is called Christ Holiness and Righteousness. Kindly go there and uh, you can connect us, you can get connected from there from, uh, to other rings that we are coming online from. And the Lord is going to bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, kindly uh, open your Bible in the book of Isaiah chapter 1. <coughs> For those who are watching us, let us go to the word of God. We thank God for the government of the nation of Kenya, despite uh, the fact that we have partial lockdown in some, uh, some sections of the country. 
they have allowed the church to minister to the people online and we cannot take it for granted that the president of the nation of Kenya and the leadership of the nation has allowed us to come online and to minister to you with this unlimited number of people the workers in the church and we are so grateful you know many other times we are always complaining and murmuring over everything and I'm requesting the church let us come out of murmuring the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 Paul is admonishing the church and he's saying and we know we should have this at our fingertips that all things work out for good everything that you see happening all things work out for good and I'm requesting the church learn how to get good out of anything that happens into your life may it be sickness may it be everything may it be luck that's why sometimes in that same book of Romans chapter 8 Paul is saying something that I love so much he's, he's asking what shall separate us from the love of God hallelujah naked lack nothing for me nothing shall separate us from the love of God so and I want the church to know that God nothing nothing gets God off guard God knew about this season he knows we are here because the church is still here on earth God knows we are here and because he's our father he is well acquainted with our everything so even despite whatever is happening in the world learn how to remain connected to your father as a son of God the Bible says Jesus is confessing and saying, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. Despite the opposition, despite the battles, Jesus was able to remain connected to his father. And that is what I'm requesting the church. Do not concentrate on the issues that are happening in your country. Your nation authorities are limited. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. Your husband, your wife, people are limited. Your boss is limited. Limited. But despite whatever will happen in that nation and in your life, remain connected to your father in heaven. Hallelujah. We are seeing uh, Isaac in a season of famine. In, a, in the book of Genesis chapter 26, God was able to, 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 to give Isaac harvest in the same year, in the same nation. Hallelujah. Where people are saying there is dryness, there is famine. God was able to give the son of, 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 uh, of Abraham a backup in his life. And the Bible says the same year where everybody could be complaining and saying there is sun, there is dryness. The Bible says Isaac harvested a hundredfold. I came to an encourage us today, even as you are watching us online, do not be limited by the situation and the circumstances on earth. The Bible says uh, that the God God orders times and seasons. And we must remain so connected to God because he's our father. We must, we must purpose. Hallelujah. Where you are watching us, I came to say today, purpose in your heart that the things that are happening in the world will not change your status as a son of God. They are not going to intimidate you. The devil will not intimidate you. The kingdom of darkness will not intimidate the church. I came to say on this altar today, church cannot be rocked. Church is the body of Jesus Christ. You are the body. You are not locked. Pray from your house. Pray from your, from your kitchen. Read the word of God from your bedroom. Hallelujah. I'm saying hallelujah. You know some of the things we are confessing. They, they are not biblical. And we must learn how to live according to the precepts and to the word of God. And we are going to enjoy the faithfulness of God in Jesus name. So we are reading the word of God from the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19 and 20. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19 and 20. Uh, when I say church cannot be locked, I don't say that it is not necessary for the brethren to gather. Actually, the Bible says we should not neglect. But as the, as the things are going changing in the world, church must remain very alert in the spirit so that we are not caught unawares even by the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, verse 19 of Isaiah chapter 1, if you are willing and obedient, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the Lord. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the Lord. Verse 20, the Bible says, But if, if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. If you, you disobey, if you don't obey, you shall be devoured by the sword. And I want the church to know that the sword... It's not necessarily, um, you know, uh, the, in my country we call it a panga 
or a, a kiss with your left foot. But the sword is the word. The word of God is sword. You'll be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now my concentration we began something last Sunday and I felt in my spirit, the spirit of God wants us to continue with this. Because many other times as the children of God, we are fighting unnecessary battles. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are fighting unnecessary battles. We are confessing things that are out of the word of God. Now we are speaking about the arrows. We are speaking about prophetic arrows. We spoke, we spoke about that last Sunday and we are continuing with the same because we need to know how to fight our battle. The Bible says Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesians and he, in chapter 6 and he's showing them from verse 11 down there. He's showing them verse 12. Our, our battle is not carnal. We don't fight our battle with flesh and blood. We have our armory of warfare. So despite what is happening, we know how to fight our battles. Hallelujah. So we are talking about the prophetic arrows of our prayers. You know, th that will give you victory in your prayers. And that will give you answers or solutions in your walk of faith. We are talking about prophetic arrows. And last Sunday, we spoke about number one of them. And we said, you cannot make it in this life if you don't have an arrow that is called thanksgiving. And that's why we, the Paul is uh, speaking to us and saying, in all things, give thanks. You are making prayers. You are making supplications. But then there is number three, thanksgiving. So uh, if you read the, those scriptures, if you read the word of God from Genesis all the way to Revelation, there is nowhere the Bible has given us the provision of complaining and murmuring. There is no provision of complaining and murmuring. Actually, we saw last Sunday when the children of Israel murmured and complained against God, against Moses, against the operations of God. The Bible says many of them did not get to Canaan. Hallelujah. That means even if God has promised something to your life or God has spoken through his prophets concerning your marriage and your children and everything around you, if you are not going to live well or to use the formulas of God, you complain and mama, you are cutting off or you are putting a stop to whatever destiny God has ordained for your life. Hallelujah. So we said last Sunday, learn how to give thanks. Learn how to give thanks. Those who are watching us, look at your children. There are people with no children. Look at your husband. We have, that's why I love the, the, the song that says, you know, count your blessings one after the other. When you wake up and your eyes can see, somebody was giving me a testimony this week and told me a friend of hers lost eyes when, the, when the, you know, that person was already grown up. She lost her eyes through diabetes. I didn't know. My God, the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. A mother of two children who was seeing yesterday, today she cannot see. Now, listen to the when you wake up and you find that every organ of your body is okay. You have other reason to give God thanks. Hallelujah. Because why, my brethren, there is hope for you. Even if you don't have a job that particular day, there is hope for you. Your ears can hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. You are by God to whatever God wants you to handle in your life. So you have all the reasons. Count your blessings. That is arrow number one. And give God thanks. Hallelujah. Number two, I want to speak about number two. Arrow number two. For those who are coming on right, right now, as you join up, we are speaking about the arrows that God is expecting. We are calling them prophetic arrows that God is expecting us to use so that we may enjoy solutions and results in our prayer and also answers in our work of faith. Number two is total obedience. Total obedience. And I'm requesting the church, as I was praying this week, the Spirit of God was opening my eyes to see something. We want to shout. We want even to give. We want to do so many things. But we don't want to totally obey God. We don't want to totally obey God. And the Spirit of God was opening my eyes to something further. And the Spirit of God was telling me, you cannot obey what you don't know. Or what you are not aware of. That means, church, we must be acquainted with the, to, uh, we must be acquainted with the will of God. The will of God is his word. Hallelujah. And I'm requesting the church, kindly get the Bible for yourself. Have a copy of the Bible for yourself. And I've been warning the church for some years now. Very soon, 
Whatever we are watching, thank God even in, you know, in here, as you watch, as you can see the screens, we have the screens. But very soon, the owners of these softwares and those, these things, they are going to clash or confuse these things. By the way, for your information, some versions of the Bible have been altered. They have been messed up with these online ones. Hallelujah. So have a hard copy of your Bible. Buy for your children. Have those hard copies of the Bible because a time is coming. Things are not going to be easy the way we are having them right now. So what are we saying? Let the church know the will of God. That means my brethren, let us know the word of God. I have always been teaching us and teaching myself that God does not understand, you know, uh, God is not a, a tribalistic uh, he's not a tribalistic pers a person. He does not understand all. The, okay, he gave us the languages, but he does not understand the so many words we tell him that are not in line with his will. His word is his will, and that's why I'm saying, if you are praying, remind God of his will, which is his word. Hallelujah! Don't go before God with your words. My but my brethren have noted one thing. But before I knew this. I asked for you to shout, and you hit the, the walls, and you know, you walk up and down. You, you are used to fast. Let me surprise you. Even if you fast 10 days, 21 days, without, you, without using the word of God, without having obeyed the will of God, which is his word, God will never answer those prayers. And that's why you see, many of us, hey, hey, we are suffering depression. Yes, it is inside there. Because somebody has prayed and somebody is wondering, I have prayed for 21 days. I have prayed for 90 days over this matter. Why is God not answering? God will always answer his will. Hallelujah. And that, that is his word. Why don't, why, why, what if you just stood up and you even you just sat down in your house and tell God, Father, it is written. Jesus uh, being tested in the wilderness. He's not, he's not struggling with the devil. He's not struggling with the devil. He's telling the devil it is written. Hallelujah. You start with that with one scripture and you tell the devil concerning my children. The Bible says children are heritage from you. Hallelujah. So you read a demand from the scriptures. Hallelujah. Not what the doctor has said. Not what the devil has said. You read a demand concerning your blessing. You, I mean even concerning your business. You tell God, Father, the Bible says, you bless the rebel of my hands. You read a demand from the will of God. Hallelujah. I want to surprise you this morning. It is morning in my country. Now, if my, if my son came to my life and they are demanding for an inheritance, somebody is demanding for 10 acres of land, and I have half an acre of land. Am I able to give them that, that inheritance? Hallelujah. So we demand from within the radius of the vicinity. I mean the radius of whatever is the inheritance of our father. And the inheritance of our father, it is well stipulated in his word in Jesus' name. So what are we saying? Total obedience. Prophet is saying, if you're willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. Now, listen to this. That one does not say uh, if you are praying and fasting, willingness and obedience. Now, what are you obeying? You obey the word of God. Now, obey, total obedience simply means you hear the word of God and you act on it. You hear the word of God. I love what the book of James says. You know, don't just be hearers. Don't just be hearers. You become a hearer but not a doer. There are people who just hear and they don't act on the word. You know, you don't do what the word has told you to do. There are no results. No matter the position somebody may have given you in our place of worship, no matter how much you give, I want to show you a scenario. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A scenario today. The Bible shows us a scenario in the book of Samuel. One time, King Samuel, hey, hey, hallelujah, a king has their place. And that is what, what we are telling our authorities. Even in my own nation. There is a place for the authority in a country. And there is a place for the priest. Hallelujah. These two cannot be interchanged. But the two need each other. Hallelujah. So somewhere. I mean Saul sees. The, 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 the prophet has taken too long. And he decides I can also. Being the king with the crowd. I can also do the services of the prophet. Hallelujah. That 
had marked the end of his kingdom. The Bible says, so, I mean, Samuel is telling Saul, don't you know? Who did you, who did you have waited for some few minutes? Who didn't you have been patient? Patience is a, is a part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, so, I mean, someone is telling Saul, so, God desires obedience than sacrifice. Hallelujah. My God, many other times, I've even had these encounters. People want to give and give. And I'm, I'm letting the church know. Giving is okay. We also give us. But if you give, not from a place of obedience to the will of God, you'll never have it. Because God is the rewarder. God is the one who gives the harvest. He's the one who commands for harvest. Hallelujah. So you must give from a place of obedience. Not somebody has told you, not somebody has said. What is written, you should give from what is written in the word of God. Hallelujah. So it means um, hearing the word of God and acting on it. It also means doing what God says in wholeness, not partial. My brethren, partial obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience. And not somebody, as I was praying in the morning, I was hearing the spirit of God. Somebody saying, this one is very difficult. It is not easy to do one, two, three things. So those who are in business and you are not paying the taxes of the government, please go and pay your licenses. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ah, one as if you were praise the Lord church. Don't be locking your businesses because it's going to join a Peter. Pay your licenses. You cannot say amen. Give to Caesar what is due to him. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, you should do obey totally. That, so that the devil does not get a loophole. Make sure you may not know all the scriptures. But as I was praying here this morning, the Spirit of God was telling me that the Spirit of God will teach us all things. Where you are supposed to do something according to the will of God. Where you are supposed to be acting on something according to the will of God. If you yield your life to the reading of the Spirit of God, he will teach you all things. And the devil will not get a loophole to attack your life as a child of God. Because you have not obeyed God. Hallelujah. So you, you obey God. You do what God is saying in wholeness. You know, you delight in doing it. it is, you are not being forced. That's why I'm telling this church and the people who follow us or even a, a, as a ministry. As we don't force people to give. We don't ask people for sins and for those things. You sow at your free will. You give at your free will. It is for your good. Hallelujah. I want us to teach you the beauty and the benefit according to the will of God. But then we don't follow you. That's why we don't have records of those who are tithing and those who are... We don't follow. It is for your own good. So you delight. You know this is what the word of God is saying and you delight in doing it. That means nobody is forcing you. Nobody is forcing born again women to submit to their husbands. Nobody is forcing born again men to love their wives. Nobody is forcing born again children to obey their parents in all things. You delight in doing the will of God. Hallelujah. And let me surprise you my brethren. It flows from within you. It, is, it, 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 it flows. You feel good. You feel complete. When your life is flowing in the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh my God. That's why we don't struggle. Even in our dressing codes. We don't copy the fashions. My God. The spirit of God will tell you in our kingdom we don't dress like that. Hallelujah. You, you don't struggle even in your utterances. The spirit of God will stop you even before you say it. You hear that voice within you telling you shut your mouth. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God will tell you, don't go stay in. <sighs> Hallelujah. So, the Spirit of God will teach us, you know, things even in obeying the, the will of God in the name of Jesus. So, what am I saying? It flows, um, it flows from that complete yielding. You know, you yield yourself. You die to self. And nobody pushes you, uh, pushes, <laughs> pushes you into it. That one. Hallelujah. That means, my brethren, we are sold out to him. You are sold out to God. You no longer live. Like the Bible says, when Jesus died, we died with him. Oh my God, you can shout to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are a dead person. Hallelujah. You don't belong to your tribe. So whatever happens to your tribe and it is against the will of God, you are out of it. And it does not affect you. Hallelujah. There are things you cannot do. There are things you cannot say because you are dead to self. 
Christ is living in you. Hallelujah. So we are sold out to God. We are totally surrendered to his will. Not our will. But Father, let your will be done. This is the direction I would want to take, Father. But you hear that prompting in your spirit. That is called total, total obedience. You hear the prompting of the spirit in your life. Then the spirit of God is telling you, don't do it this way. Do it this way. Then you say like Jesus, it is not my will, Father. Let your will be done. Hallelujah. The other thing is that you, have, you don't have your way. You allow God to have his way. I'm talking about total obedience. Hallelujah. Now, I want the church to know that total obedience, it is a hallmark. It is that hallmark of our walk of faith or salvation. It is that, it is that, it is that, it, uh, that total obedience will distinct you. You know, will mark you. Will, 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 will show you as a set apart vessel. I love people like Joseph. Despite the situation and the circumstance, they are saying, this one we cannot do. You are set apart. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It is a hallmark of our walk of faith. Now, we completely follow as God reads. That's why uh, David is saying, your word, your will, that means your will, is the light unto my path and the lamb unto my feet. I don't read myself. The Bible says that God orders the steps of the righteous. Now, how, you, how will you be led by God if you are not yielded to him? Somebody is asking, I'm hearing that question in the spirit. Prophetess, how do I yield? Just purpose in your life to surrender. Today you just say, oh God, Father, I don't want to lean on my own understanding. We have been there and we know when you ask such questions, we know we don't have time to answer so many of these questions. Now, when you do this, this will build your hope. This, when you totally obey God, my brethren, there's no provision of panicking in your life, despite what will go on in the world, that one will give you daily hope. Hallelujah. Because you know the one who began the good work in your life will still bring it into accomplishment in Jesus' name. And I want to assure the church that God does not do his, his things half beat. He does not do things half beat. God does not slow down. God moves at his pace and in his time he makes all things beautiful. So that one will build your hope and it will build your faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. So it builds your faith as you continue hearing the word of God and, on, and, uh, and obeying, totally obeying. And the Bible says the hope that comes from God in our lives does not disappoint. Hallelujah. I'm saying hallelujah. Now I want us to look at some scenarios from the word of God and we are going to look at some scriptures very fast. Now the Bible says uh, our father of faith, Abraham, he was called Abraham. God tells him, live here and go. That's why I'm saying, you totally yield. You totally surrender. You don't argue with the God. Woo! It's not your way, but his way. It is not your will, but his will. This is where your comfort is connected to. So Abraham lives and goes. And then God is telling him to arrive that I will show you. Now, he made a brother, and we know the story. He carried with, him, with himself that which God has not, had not told him to carry. And we see the repercussion. Heaven is shut, heaven is silent, until he acted upon it. That means even when you begin a journey of obedience, and you mess up in between, you cause a brother. But there is a provision of, the, of rectifying that. God comes again to Abraham after giving him the son, tells him, go and sacrifice. There were so many mountains. In obedience, God is a God of specification. You can note that for yourself. In obedience, learn how to be very keen to that core thing that God really wants. God is a God of, spe of specification. Somebody came to me last week, I think it was this week, and told me I wanted to do it this way. And God has told me, no, it is this way. It was difficult. But that is the instruction. God is a, the word of God is very specific. And I want to show you a scenario even as I go. To, the Bible speaks about Moses. Hey, Moses, the greatest prophet who has never been until now. The Bible says the children of Israel are asking God for water. So God is telling Moses, speak to the rock. What do we see Moses doing? He is hitting the rock. Hallelujah. God does not operate like that. He is a, don't, you cannot help God by changing his voice. You act on it as he has said. 
Ooh, hallelujah. So what do we do? Do we see at Mount Moriah? God is providing. When Abraham is doing it specifically, God is providing. I came to say this morning, it is money in my country. And for those who are watching us online, many other times we are bombarding heaven with our issues, with our prayer requests and so many things. I came to ask us, even I ask, I ask myself, have we followed the instruction of God according to his specifications? Hallelujah. Woo, results of disobedience. You bring a lot of strife to your life. You bring a lot of strife. You get disconnected from your destiny. We are seeing that to Moses. After all the rebel, he couldn't get to Canaan. Oh my God. And I've always told this church and those who know, us, who know me, me, I will, not, I will not feel to get to my destiny in the Lord because of people. I'll get there. Avoid pleasing people and displeasing God. Hallelujah. So I missed it. His kingdom, whatever God initially had seen a man you know, in, I had seen a king in his soul. The same God is striking Saul with, a, with an evil spirit. That is God for you. When you don't follow his specifications, when you are not yielded, when you are not fully surrendered, even if he had chosen you, the Bible says that, that the gifts of God are, irrevo are, not, uh, are without uh, repentance. They are irrevocable. You could be healing, you could be doing all those things, but God left you so many years ago. And that is what we are seeing in the church right now. People who are just walking shells in the Lord, but they have no power, denying the power they're in. So what are we seeing? What is God saying? Church, the standard of the, exp the expectation of God in our walk of faith is very high. The standard of God and, uh, you know, in our walk of faith, the expectation of God. God, <laughs> uh, many other times we want God to understand that, you know, I'm still a human being. I'm still a human being. I bribed because everybody's bribing. I'm still a human being. How would I do business and everybody's bribing their way? And I came to see on this altar, no matter how much tithe you give, if you get your con business connections through bribery, the Bible says those who bribe and those who receive bribes, they are all cast. Both of them are cast. No matter how much tithe you give through those businesses, the curse of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. So the expectations and the standard of God for us is too high. But if people like Joseph made it, we shall also make it. Hallelujah. We shall make it. Hallelujah. I'm saying hallelujah. So don't fear. Now, in our case, the Spirit of God will lead us. The Spirit of God will counsel you. The Spirit of God will teach you all things. The Spirit of God will lead you. He will search the heart of God, the might of God, and download it to you as long as you are willing to obey the word of God in Jesus' name. And I want to repeat a statement I've written in the Spirit. Partial obedience is disobedience. For those who are told, uh, if Isaac, if Abraham was told by God, give me Isaac, then they go to Mount Moriah, he's on the mountain, then he decides, I will not give Isaac, I will give one of my servants. God will not have provided a sheep. For the sacrifice. Hallelujah. So anything you want God to act on. And anything you want God to be a part of. It must be with the full obedience. Total obedience. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. So how do you get here? My brethren. We are talking about the arrows. The prophetic arrows. That are getting you results in your prayers. And giving you breakthrough in this work of faith. So you must die to self. Today, purpose as a, as a son of God, I no longer live. Because if you live, like you know, in my country, we have so many tribes, you're going to behave like your people. And you're going to say, everybody in my community is doing this. Everybody in the nation of Kenya is doing this. This is how people are doing their businesses. This is how ministers are doing their things. We shall not do what people are doing. We are not called to do that. We are called to do what Jesus is saying and what Jesus is, is doing. It, because we are seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. Now we must know the will of God. You cannot obey what you don't know. The will of God is his word. So the Lord is speaking to us this particular morning and say, We must know his will. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Come for Bible study. Listen to the, uh, to the preaching of the servants of God. I have always told you that God will not come in person. Before we matured in the Lord, we used to make a prayer and tell God in my language, like now in my country, Mungu kuja na usitumane. He will not come at a tumana. Wana asifiwe. God will send somebody. The Bible says in Job 3, 29, 
that whatever God wants to accomplish, he'll, use, he'll work with a man. That's what the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, that we are co-laborers, we are co-workers with him. That means we must know the word of God. That is his will. May, it may be the Rogos or the Rema, and you're going to enjoy the faithfulness of God in Jesus' name. Very fast, I want us to look at the scriptures. Give us someone. I did on the screen. Give us someone. Uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Psalm chapter 1. Can I read the scriptures because of time? Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. But this is the right. Give me verse 1 of that. Give me verse 1 of that. Yes. Blessed is a man that walks of the ungodly, not started in the ways of sinners. Now, this is a qualification of being alert in the spirit that you are able to, uh, to, to, to hear the voice of God, to know the will of God. Make sure where you stand, where you sit, your company is a godly com company. Give me number two. The Bible says, avoid defilement. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. You cannot totally obey God if your company is wrong, but he's right. That's why we are saying those people who decide to totally obey God, they do it right if you delight. His delight is in the law of the Lord. That is the will of God. That is the word of God. And in his law that he meditate day and night. Hallelujah. Despite where you work, despite where you live every day and every night, purpose to know the law of the Lord. That is the will of God. James chapter 1, verse 22 and 25. Very fast, James chapter 1. James 1, uh, verse 22 and 25, up to 25. The Bible says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. When we hear the word of God, when we know the will of God, and we don't do it, we deceive ourselves. For, in an, uh, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Verse 24. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgets. That is it. Verse 25. You can read the scriptures for yourself. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue, continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. When we hear the word of God. You, by the way, let me surprise you. I have learned something in the work of faith. Learn how to obey God even if you are alone. Even if you are obeying alone. People may not understand you. They never understood Joseph in Egypt. They never understood Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Babylon. But the, at the, the end of the day, the Bible says God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, there will be a reward here. And internally, there shall be a reward for us. Amen. So, whatever, oh my God, and this man shall be blessed in his deed. You will enjoy the blessings of God in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. I'm finishing. Romans chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. I love the word of God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. Give me the scriptures very fast. We are reading all of us from the screen. Romans chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. The Bible says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, imagine, when you disobey Adam and Eve, when they disobeyed, when they messed up, we, all, we were all counted as sinners. Hallelujah. That's why I'm saying the standard of our God is very high. He does not understand that you are just a man. You can fornicate the way you want. You can steal the way you want. You can lie the way you want. That's why Jesus is saying, I will not leave you as orphans. He has left to us the Holy Spirit who will teach us all things. The, Jesus knows we are human and we are here on earth. There are so many issues in this world. But the Holy Spirit is there to help us in all things. Hallelujah. So by the mess of this, our first parent, Adam and Eve, we were all counted as sinners. Give me verse 19. Go you go and read verse, uh, the word of God. For as by one man is obedient, many were made sinners. So by obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Hallelujah. That is Jesus Christ. By obeying to die on the cross, we have been made righteous. So the same case is, I mean the same grace is flowing in our lives. So when you obey, 
When you totally obey God, I'm talking about the prophetic arrows that will give you victory in your prayers and give you solutions in your walk of faith. Now, total obedience to God is arrow number two. And I want to assure you, my brethren, it will not only bring healing to your life. Isaac is not enjoying the favor of God because of his goodness, but because Abraham, the father, totally obeyed God. Hallelujah. I'm, talking, I'm saying hallelujah. And I'm requesting a church in my country, Kenya, and even in the continent of Africa and the nations of the world, Kaitre, the problem of the nation of Kenya is not the government, it is the church. I'm saying hallelujah. We are the problem. When the church is healed, the nation will be healed. When the church is obeying God, the nation will be, or will be, or will obey God. Hallelujah. So in your place of work, wherever you are representing Christ, put your life in order as a child of God. We have so many foreign people in the church. People who are fornicating adulterers. You know, this is, I'm not saying, I'm saying them online. Fornicators, adulterers, thieves, liars, haters. What else? People who are full of jealousy. What do you expect? The same grace will flow to the nation. So can we heal the church first? Then the nation will be healed. The spiritual will always affect the physical. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying everybody is fallen. I'm saying there, there are so many fallen. That's why Paul is saying God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So put yourself in order as a child of God. Make sure wherever you're working, wherever you are, we are talking about corruption. Corruption is so much in the church. We are, we, we are victims of something. Corruption last year, July. <laughs> Through men of God. It is all over. These things are not busy, but we should take them. Hallelujah. Give me uh, Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Put yourself in order. Make sure your marriage is in obedience, not obedience to God. Make sure your children, let us do what we are supposed to do. And the children of God. So by the time you start before God, you are justified. The Bible says, because of Abraham obeying to this far, he, it was credited to him as righteous. Not because of so, not because of where he came from, not because of so many certificates or degrees and blah blah, because of obeying God in totality. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 24, 27. Matthew 7. <sighs> Me, I have been conned by people in the church and they are still speaking in tongues. And these things are there. These things are there. The Bible says, <laughs> therefore, you know, people say we don't judge. We are not judging. We are speaking the truth and we are correcting using the word of the standard of the word. Therefore, whosoever heareth this saying of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. You can turn to your neighbor, whatever you are watching us and telling us, be a wise person. Wisdom is not from books. Wisdom is not inherited. It is, for, it is given by God. The spirit of wisdom. For those who are hearing the word of God. And obeying. This person will be like a, you know, a man who built upon a rock. And when there's the, 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 the storms. Like what is happening in the world right now. They cannot affect your business. They cannot, they cannot change your study in the Lord. I want to finish this there. You go and read the scriptures. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 15, 10 and 14. I'm giving you the scriptures, Joshua, my time. Joshua 15, 10 and 14. We are finishing the word of God. Can I write the scripture, Joshua 15, 10 and 14? Hallelujah. God is speaking to Joshua, very profound. And the Buddha compassed from Bera west at, and to Mount Thea and passed along the side of Mount Thea, which is on the north side. You go and read the word of God for yourself. God is speaking to the children of Israel through his servant Joshua. Go and read Joshua chapter 1. I want to finish because of time. 7 and 8. God is very concerned about obedience or keeping his law. He's talking to Joshua after the death of Moses. Romans 2, 6, 11. <laughs> Romans chapter 2, 6 and 11. I'm jumping because of time. Romans 2, 6 and 11. The word of God is very clear. Paul is speaking to the church. You know, uh, thank you. Who will let that to every man according to his deeds. It is God who will reward you according to what you do. That's why Isaiah is saying, if you are willing and obedient, God comes to reward. Hallelujah. If you are willing, that's why verse 18 
you know, uh, uh, verse 19, about, uh, we have read 18 and 19 in the book of uh, Isaiah. If you are willing go and obedient, God will bless, God will reward. That's what we are seeing here. But if you are not the same sword that is supposed to be blessing you and suppo supposed to be protecting you and ushering your life to the destiny God ordained for you, then it is going to devour you. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is a, it's like a, a two-edged sword. It cuts both sides. It is able to bring a reward and bring hallelujah. You know, people don't want to hear these things. Genesis 22, 17 to 18. You can read for yourself the scriptures. I'm giving you the scriptures. Hallelujah. You can give us that in the conclusion. Let us read that. Genesis 22, 17 and 18. The Spirit of God said, read this. Obedience in rewarding. Let us see that. Genesis 22, 17 to 18. The Bible says that in blessing I will bless thee, that is Abraham, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed. We are the seed of Abraham as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the sea shore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. That, that is where we are. We are grafted in. The Bible says just as Abraham was the seed of the promise, we have also been grafted in. So we are a part of this. Look at verse 18 where the Bible says, I'm through with the word. Let us see verse 18. And in thy seed, hallelujah, you can put your name there, shall all the nations of the, wo of the world, of the earth, be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. I'm saying hallelujah. So obedience not only will bring a flow of the goodness of God in your life, but also to the generations of your children in Jesus' name. Because it is flowing from our father of faith, Abraham, in Jesus' name. So arrow number two, that will give you victory and give you answers in your walk of faith is total obedience to the voice of God. Hallelujah. What God has said concerning your marriage, concerning your nation, I'm requesting the church in Kenya, don't just shout and mama and complain. Let us wage war. And remind God what he has said concerning our nation, Kenya. Hallelujah. The Bible says God will follow his word to perform it. When God hears his word, Jesus is saying it is written. He will follow that word to perform it. And nobody can stop God from performing his word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord watch over us. May the Lord keep you. Let us purpose. And I hear the Spirit of God say, you cannot interchange one thing in God with another. If God says obey, obey. If God says pray, pray. There is a place for prayer and there is a place for obedience. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. God bless you so much for keeping us online. May the Lord bless you. We, are, we shall keep on coming online.